Welcome to the second lecture on statistical methods in high energy physics. Let's now turn to the definition of key entities that we are going to use throughout this course and that you are going to meet everywhere in statistics. A prominent object among those is without any doubt the probability density function, shortly PDF. In the previous part, we've seen that elements of the sample space can be assigned a probability P of A. Probability is a finite real positive number. However, what if the sample space is a non-denumerable set? This situation is very common because it corresponds, for example, to an experiment whose outcome is a real number. Like if you're measuring the height of your table or the weight of flour for your preferred cake. In these situations, the probability has to be generalized to a probability density. The value you measure is called a random variable because the outcome of your measurement, or more generally an experiment, is random. Let's assume we have such a random variable, x, and that it is continuous. Let's further assume that there is a function f and then an integral of the function over a certain range gives the probability for your experiment outcome to be within that range. We can write it down as follows. Probability of x minus delta to x plus delta equals to an integral of f of x prime dx prime within range x minus delta to x plus delta. Such a function is the probability density function and its unit is the inverse of the unit of the variable x. Typically, we say that x is distributed according to the probability density function f and we will denote this relation in the following way x delta f of x. Note that if x is a discrete variable, then the value f of x is directly the probability to get an experimental outcome x. Both discrete and continuous variables are very common in particle physics. An example of discrete variable can be, for instance, the number of top quarks produced after 10 years of the LHC running. We also define a cumulative distribution function such that it corresponds to the probability that our experiment results in a value x prime, which is lower than the value of x. f of x is equal to probability of x prime being lower than x, which in turn equals to the integral of f of x prime by dx prime between minus infinity and x. The cumulative distribution function is therefore always a non-decreasing function with minimum at 0 and maximum at 1. It is quite instructive to show that values of the cumulative distribution function evaluated at points drawn from its corresponding probability density function are always uniformly distributed between 0 and 1. This fact will be the key component for the most straightforward Monte Carlo method, as you will see later. Let's now prove it. Let's have a continuous random variable x distributed according to the probability density function f and the corresponding cumulative distribution function capital F. For any given range AB, the probability of drawing a value x prime from within that range is equal to probability of x prime in being in range AB is equal to integral of f of x prime by dx prime between A and B, and this in turn equals to capital F of B minus capital F of A where in the last step we have just used the definition of the cumulative distribution function to rewrite the integral. Now, because the cumulative distribution function is non-decreasing, 
the probability of value f of x prime lying between the values of f a and f b is the same as the probability of x prime lying between a and b. In other words, probability of capital F of x prime being in the range f a f b equals the probability of x prime being in the range a b and that equals to f b minus f a we've just demonstrated that for any interval f a f b the probability to draw a value f of x prime from that interval is equal to the interval length This can be only true for a so-called uniform distribution, which has all the values in its range equally probable. Of course, the lowest possible value of f of x is 0 and the highest is 1. Therefore, the uniform distribution is between 0 and 1. f of x is distributed according to the uniform distribution between 0 and 1. The previous example was just a special case of something called the transformation of probability density functions. Let's now assume that we are measuring a circumference of a circle in order to determine its radius. Let's assume we know the probability density function f according to which the circumference O is distributed. However, we aren't interested in the circumference itself because it is just a mean for us to measure the radius r. Obviously, we are much more interested in the PDF g for the radius. This situation is very common and there is an analytical way to transform a probability density function f of a variable x to become a probability density function g of another variable a if we know the relation between the two variables. Let's suppose that there is a unique inverse to the function a of x and let's denote it x of a. Then a is distributed according to f of x of a times absolute value of derivative dx over dA. If A of X doesn't have a unique inverse, it must be split into branches A sub I of X. where unique inverse x sub i of a exists and then contributions from all these branches must be added. So a is distributed according to sum over i of f of x i of a times absolute value of derivative dx i over dA. Let's demonstrate how this works step by step on the example of the radius measurement. Obviously, there is a trivial relation between the radius r and the circumference o. r of o equals to o over 2 pi. The inverse of the function is o of r equals to, equals to 2 pi r. The probability to draw a value r lying in the interval a, b is equal to the probability to draw a value o 
playing in the interval 2PA, 2PB. Written using integrals, integral of GR dr between A and B equals to integral of FO DO between 2 pi A, 2 pi B. And that equals the interval between AB of F2 pi R, 2 pi DR. This is valid for any interval AB and therefore GR equals to F 2 pi R times 2 pi. Let's now move to a new topic. A common situation can be that we know probability density functions for two random variables. x is distributed according to function f and y is distributed according to g. And we want to know the probability density function for their sum. The sum z equals to x plus y is distributed according to a probability density function h that is a convolution of f and g functions. h of z equals to integral of f of x times g of z minus x by dx. Similarly, we might be interested in a PDF for the product of x and y. The probability density function of the product z equals to x times y is just another type of convolution. h of z equals to integral of f of x times g of z over x by dx over absolute value of x. <laughs>